Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whoever you are, whether you're listening or watching. It's been a while since I've said that, but my name is Joe Mias, and this is a Chat About Football podcast. As you might know, we were doing a series called Hometown Heroes. And what it basically means is that me and my co-host Robert, he can't make it today, but he's always going to be on the pod at some point. We're getting the best people and profiles of people that are football players and just people in general that come from our hometown of Ilford and our home borough of Redbridge, talking to them about football, talking to them about what they, what Ilford means to them, what it's been like for them growing up and what they've gone to do in their careers and lives. Um, we put this series on pause just to sort of, because life and the pandemic got in, got in the way, but thankfully we're back. And we're back with a big one because today, believe it or not, I've managed to contact and thankfully have on with us a next Premier League player. He's been... He's played for Tottenham. He's played for Millwall. He's a Millwall legend, if he, if he doesn't mind me saying so. He's played for um, Wickham, amongst other clubs. And now he's the assistant manager of um, Cogsville Town. Have I got have I pronounced that right? Yeah, Cogsville, yes. Yeah, Cogsville yeah. Town, yeah. But um, without further ado, I've got with me here Stuart Nevercut. Stuart, how are you doing, mate? You all right? Hi, mate. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm um, happy, great, amazing. Again, it's been a while since I've done this, so forgive me if I'm a bit. Rusty when it comes to this sort of thing. It will be good. Again, I'm just literally going to chat to him just about what he's done in his career, about all the sort of things he's had. And most importantly for me, I'm going to chat to him about what it's like growing up in Ilford and how he's managed to sort of do what he's done in his career. Because growing up, I know, I thought not many people make out this area to do much, but there we go. <laughs> Stuart's a yeah. living example. As to, you know what I mean? You can be from Ilford and be a professional football player, so... Can't wait to chat to him about that. Before we get started, I just want to remind you about where you can find us as well. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. We're on Twitter and Instagram at ACAF underscore podcast. But yeah, Stuart, um, first of all, I just want to ask you guys, ask you, how are you doing? You're right? How are you feeling about coming on today? Do you know what to expect or do you reckon yeah, you're just going to see yeah, how it goes? I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's nice to go back and... Uh... Talk about your career, um, talk about your childhood as well. I haven't really done that for for a long, long time. So it's nice to to remember them times, you know, when I grew up in in Ilford, school in Ilford, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to to reminiscing on them sort of times. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to ask you just because um, this is a bit where I call this bit fifteen minute fan time, but it might be just ten minutes because I think it's just. It leads in well into your career anyway. But I thought I'd start first and foremost. Which team did you support growing up? Uh, it was a tough one, really, because I was sort of... I, sort of, I, I, I trained with quite a few sides, um, you know, growing up. I was, I, I, was in a, I was at Fulham as a young child. Um, they, had a, they had a centre in Dagenham. Uh, used to go there on a, on a Tuesday night. Um, Met Ray Parler there, um, and then we went on to Arsenal, the pair of us, and then obviously we went separate ways during our youth youth time. I went off to Spurs, he stayed at Arsenal, and his, his career went on to there. Um, I wasn't really a supporter of anybody, really. It was tough. My dad's from Liverpool. Um, my mum was from North London, so I was at that uh, Tottenham, Liverpool, thing going on so I didn't really grab hold of a team really I just enjoyed watching football um went to Fulham a couple of times I, I got some free tickets for that um went to Arsenal a few times obviously went to Tottenham watched a few games there so I wasn't really taken in by supporting on things like I think I was more interested in playing and supporting but you know the, you know what, what was going on in, in our time Liverpool was a strong side it back in, in my that growing up time in the uh, 80s and late 70s. So, you know, Liverpool was high up, but obviously with mum's side and Spurs. So it was difficult to really pick one, really, but it was just the, the, the love of watching football, really. I, I was I was hooked on it very, very early. Um, and, you know, it went on from there, really. So, yeah. yeah. Did you go to watch many games live as a youngster as well? Yeah, really a lot. Um, as, as, as I said, it was, 
as, as I got older into, into, into secondary school, I used to hop on the trains and, and watch Leighton Orient. Um, uh, we used to go, we, you know, that was that was with Ray Parling, you know, we, we were good good mates and uh, we played Sunday football together and there was about three or four of us used to jump on the train. Where's your fancy going to watch this week? We'd, we'd go to Leighton Orient, we might go to West Ham, we might go to Arsenal, we go to Spurs. And then that's how it was, you know, we were just, you know, it was easy to get in ground, you know, it's not like the going on season ticket holders and things like that, you know, you're looking at stadiums that were all terraced. So it was, it, they were packed out week in, week out with sort of 40,000 people and we'd go there, obviously late in order, it wasn't getting that crowd, but we'd go and watch them and, and it was just, you know, just, just to watch football. Uh, really enjoyed going to, going to games and then Obviously, when you get chosen at a pro club, you start to play Saturdays and, and, and in youth team games, and then you sort of watching becomes playing for you wherever you was playing, like Arsenal. Then we go off to Highbury and watch the first team play. Or when I was at Spurs, we might have a game in at Bristol, and then by the time you got back, you watch the second half of the first team. So um, really, you know, really good times to to. to um, um, with doing that, so you know, learned loads of of, of players, and you know, I was, I was a good watcher. Really enjoyed watching. I am curious to sort of know that fun for that going to watch games live. What do you reckon? Number one, the best game you've watched live, and number two, the best player you've watched live. Um, looking back on when I, I was becoming a defender, I think um, I I went for Alan Hansen to be fair, and uh, he was he was just a class act. You know, and uh, very class, and, and and you know, he, he was he was your sort of new age centre half that was coming out from the back, and he had a pass, but and and he and he read the game really well. And um, to watch games, um, yeah, I watched. A, I went to a North London derby, very 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 young in in, in my life, and uh, went there. Um, Spurs, Arsenal, White Hart Lane, and I think it ended up three-three. One of the games, and it was just wow. a magical game. It was just like end-to-end stuff. Goals were going in left, right, and centre. Quality players on the pitch, and uh, you know, really, really top, top footballers. And uh, you know, that that was that's something that I, I, I look back on. And as you said, you know, best game I've, I've seen live, really, and, and, and just. The atmosphere was special, and, and, and both teams were were up there at the time, challenging around the title. But obviously, Liverpool in their, in their pom were winning everything, and, and they just couldn't get near them really. And um, so it was a really, yeah, North, to taste the North London derby and to end up playing in one, it, it's, it's something that you think, "Cool, I'd love to play in one of them." And <laughs> luckily, I, I did. You know, so it, it, it was something that. Really, I didn't think at the time that was going to happen, but you always hope that one day that something like that does happen. So. I guess, again, like you said, it's really nice to be able to see it out live as well, because, again, like, it's like you have something to refer to as well. I know that you've played in North London Derby, but when you watch it as a fan, it's, it's still quite breathtaking, and it takes on another level when you've when you've played in it. But I guess sort of having that exposure to it when you're young as well, even when you are coming through the ranks at, Tottenham to know that you know or facing them lot up the road it does stop the fires a bit and you know what it means whatever wherever you are wherever you you know it's one game that's it's just for you know all games are for supporters but it's just one game where you think I'm you know that that fella in the stand he's going to go work the next day and and on the two days later and he's going to go thank you you know what I mean he's not got that Arsenal supporter you know, I played in uh, Millwall, West Ham derbies as well. You know, they're very ferocious. And, um, you know, there isn't a lot of love lost there. Crystal yeah. Palace, Millwall derby, it's another one. You know, they're going to be playing that in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in January. So, good to see that back. Um, but, you know, North London derby is very, very special. And um, I think anyone that, if you ever talk to anyone else has played in them, it's a very special special one and to win one is very special as well um, I was lucky enough to win at Highbury uh, the old ground and uh, and to win one at uh, Spurs as well so very very happy to to have done that so yeah 
Yeah. Um, I speak of North London Derby, there's one that sticks out, and you probably would have remembered it very, very well being a youth player as well. The one at Wembley 91 when Gaza launches that free kick into the top corner as well. Yeah. Um, I've got two questions on Gaza, and then probably this ends the fan section actually, because I know that you're Gaza had a big impact on you as a youth player growing yeah. coming through the ranks as well. Number yeah. one, were you there at that final uh, semi final? I have to ask, were you there at Wembley that day or were you not? Yeah, they, they travelled. Obviously, I was at Spurs at the time and um, yeah. I was um, I was just doing my first year there uh, as an apprentice. And, you know, what a first year to go there. And, and you've got you've got a semi final of a North London derby. I've just been released from Arsenal. So it had a lot of, a lot of things going on for me. And, yeah. and we got coached there from the ground. Um, uh, for the semi final, won the semi final, then you got the final. You think, wow, this is the first season at Spurs, and I'm going to Wembley twice, you know, to see the semi and then go and see the final. But and that's, I think that's the fittest I've seen Gazza as well. He was just, he was just ripped, he was yeah. just, he was unplayable, you know. And I think, I think if you look at that cup run of '91, it, it was him that got us through to that. That final, you know, some of the games that he, you know, where we were behind and he just come back and he just score, he just score important goals. And it, it was him that ninety one uh, FA Cup run was was all about him. You know, he was just an, in, on another level, really another level. But I've got to say that they were a very special group. That, that the boys from ninety one, you know, we haven't had a lot of success since, uh, but. That, that group of guys, you know, a lot of a lot of ex, a lot of players always come out and say, um, you're as good as what your pros were. And, and we had a set of pros there that really did, they were hard on you, very, very hard. You know, I had Pat Vanden Howe was my, I used to clean his boots, you know, and he was a tough guy, tough guy. And and if you've done them wrong, you know, they, they, they come on, they come down in your heart. And, and I think that's where we're missing it now. I think these young lads that are coming through the ranks now are just missing that sort of connection with, with tough pros. And, um, I, you know, I'll know, I, I say, I, we, we, had a, we had a reunion up in Manchester. We played, I, I still play for the Spurs old boys. We, we played charity games. Yeah. And, um, Stephen Clements was there. Uh, he, he just lost Ray, uh, his father. So it was a bit of a poignant sort of moment. And, and uh, Mark Falco was there. Paul Stewart was there. Not seen Paul Stewart since he left for Liverpool. And really sad. It, it, was, it, it was sort of... And I, I, I come out with speaks. I said, you know, I owe it to you guys for what I've done. And I think everyone sort of said that. I think Paul Stewart said to me, I owe it to so and so person at Man City for, for getting me for being tough on myself. And but they always had time for you. They, they weren't these sort of guys that were just you train with them and then they'll go off home and, and do their stuff. They always had time for you. Like a Gary Mammoth would come up to you and go, sure, you fancy doing a little bit extra. I think you need a little bit of extra. And they, they'd do that. They were they were top, top boys. And then to have a group. As good as that, you know, we, we lost Justin Edinburgh uh, two years ago. You know, he was in that 91 squad. What a fella. You know, I, I, I travelled in with Justin. He lived in Chelsea when we was playing and we all, we all met up. And sad day that. And um, to lose someone like that at such a young age. Um, and and we, we sort of all sort of, we all sort of thank the group that, that 91, that what we've done now. And... Um, and I hope, I hope I was a pro at Millwall that brought on the Tim Cahills, the Paul Eiffels, the uh, Stephen Reeds, uh, the Lucas Nils. And I think, well, I think I've done a good job. I think I've done a good job because I knew what the pros had done for me. So, you know, really, really top boys. That 91 team, Terry Venables in charge, they were, they were a top, top side. And a small squad, squad of about 15, 16 players. Not, not like now where you've got 30 odd players to call up. They had 16 players. And and, um, and that's why we got our opportunity because the squads were so small. You, if you was good enough in the youth team, you'd go and play. And that was that was the way it was. That's the way it was. Well, I actually find that so interesting to hear just because of, I think the close nature 
of that that team because like for example for you to say that like, 30 years later you still were able to sort of meet up and sort of celebrate yeah. that achievement as well it kind of just shows that there was a bond there that I think that Venables created as well yeah, uh, yeah. yeah really good yeah, yeah. I, I am curious though and I think this is the last question I have to ask about the fandom sort of side of thing before I go into your actual youth career and proper that first team stuff right but I know that Gaza was a big big figure and I know that for example again you would have been around in and around the youth setup during Italian 90 right yeah. um, I know you watched Italian 90 as a fan was yeah. that the best international tournament you remember sort of growing up, um, aside from that Euro 96? Was that the one that sticks out in the memory, Italia 90? And how was the Spurs training ground when Gaza and Lineker came back after that Italia 90? Yeah, it was... Um, the, the two were very special. The two were... The 1990 and the, and the 96 was, was very special, you know. With the 96, you were actually playing with the lads that were in that squad. So you had the Barbies, the Campbells, the Andertons and the Sheridan. So you're going off on your holiday and your teammates are going on a on a on an adventure of their own, you know what I mean? And, and, and to see the, the crowds and, and the backing that them boys got was 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 unbelievable. And uh, the 90 squad, um, yeah, obviously I come but they come back and, and, and I was an apprentice at the time, but I just remember that, that usually, you know, we used to have one security guard on the gate at, at our training ground in Mill Hill. I think we must have had about 20 security guards because it just <laughs> got absolutely... You, 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 were, you were training at the training ground. There must have been about three or 4,000 people watching that. But it was, it was brilliant. It was, it was something else. And, you know, every, you know, people I knew outside of, of, of Spurs, you know, mates and stuff, I'll get us Gaza's signature, get us Gary Lineker's signature. So what I've done, I ended up buying a, I ended up buying a, one of Gaza and one of Lineker at the club shop and just printed a lot of these pictures. And I was just handing them out like that. We need to sign, I was sign that Gary, sign that Gaza, and they were great. You know, they, this is what they, they wanted to do. So, you know, every, every photo that I got, I was handing it out to me mates and stuff like that. And it was just, it was just, yeah, really, it was buzzing. The place was really alive. And, um, yeah, the quality, quality players, you know, quality lads. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's really, that was a really good time for England, English football. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it now. I think the, we've got we, the boys, the squad at the moment is a, is a really good squad. They're nice boys. And, and I think that is what they are. I, I think we've had a bit of arrogancy in the past, in their, in their naughty years, uh, with that Liverpool Man United divide, but, but you know this squad now is a very very they're a, they're a nice they're a nice squad, and they really deserve to win something. And I think they they won't be far off in the next yeah, couple. Of years. Definitely. Again, Stuart, thanks for that section. I really do um, appreciate you. Again, really really good insight. I think it's nice to have someone talk so. Uh, to have that first-hand uh, experience of Italian night and the buzz after it as well, you hear a lot yeah. about it, but to sort of hear what it was yeah. like in the top of the training ground as well, yeah. that's awesome, uh, honestly. But I think what we're going to do now, um, I'm just going to let this go for the YouTube section and for the, the podcast bit. We're going to end this bit. We're going to call this 15-minute fan time. We're going to put this out in a package and we're going to put this out as a little preview as to what the main episode is going to be like. So just thought I'd end this, wrap this up in a nice bowl. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We'll be back on the main bulk of the podcast right now without I'll be talking to Stuart about his career and what he's done. So stay tuned. We'll be back soon.